MSP, mate. How are you? Oh, Jonathan, I'm having a right mare. One of my biggest clients just had a security audit. Apparently, I've given global admin access to half of the staff. Oh, no. What did you say? Well, I said they needed admin access. And he said, have you heard of Lee's privilege? Mike. Look, Jonathan, I'm in a right mess. I've got people still needing admin roles in Microsoft 365, but I've no idea what to do with them. Can you help me? So here's the situation. Mike has done what a lot of IT pros and MSPs have done at some point. He's handed out Global Administrator to anyone who needed to do admin stuff. Now, this seems harmless until there's an audit or a breach or someone clicks something that they shouldn't do. Now, Global Admin gives complete control over your Microsoft 365 tenant. That's identity, email, files, compliance settings, the whole lot. It's meant for just a handful of accounts. But here's the thing. Microsoft 365 has over 60 built-in admin roles designed so you can give people just enough access to do their jobs and no more. That's called the principle of least privilege and it's a key part of zero trust. So in today's video, we're gonna fix Mike's mess by assigning the right role to each person in the business. Mike has got a list of names and I'm gonna walk through which role each one actually needs instead of the global admin role. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you another great tip on how to manage admin roles in Microsoft 365. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, to start with, we've got Sally who works in HR. She onboards new staff and manages user accounts. What role does she need? Okay, so Sally needs the user administrator role. That will allow her to manage users and reset passwords. Nothing too risky. Aaron, he's on the help desk. He unlocks accounts and resets passwords all day. What should I give him? Help desk administrator. Just enough access to manage user issues without too much risk. Right, Gemma, she actually works in IT, but she looks after email. She sets up shared mailboxes, distribution lists, all of that. What does she need? That's easy. Exchange Administrator. That will mean Gemma has access to mailboxes and mail flow and things like that without touching the rest of Microsoft 365. Marcus, he's our Teams guy. He lives in meeting policies and app setups. What does he need? For Marcus, it's Teams Administrator. Keep him nice and focused on Microsoft Teams without letting him touch anything else. Karen? She's in operations, talk too much, but she manages our SharePoint sites and its structure, things like that. What does she need? For Karen, it's SharePoint Administrator. That'll give her access to sites and sharing settings without her stepping on anyone else's toes. Natalie, she works in legal. Quite a serious character, no sense of humour. She manages e-discovery and retention stuff. What role does she need? Compliance Administrator. That will give her access to the purview tools without broader admin rights. Dev, he runs all our security, defender alerts, incident response. Is there a role for him? Security Administrator? That'll give him everything he needs with the security tools, but no user access. Oh, then we've got Claire from Finance. She's always on phone, chasing me for invoices. Can I give her a role so she can get her own invoices from Microsoft 365? Oh, for Claire, it's Billing Administrator. She can see all the subscriptions. She can download invoices. That's just what she needs. Oh, I nearly forgot about Sanjay. He's our device guy. Manages laptops, phones, compliance settings, things like that. Is there a bit of a role for him? Sanjay definitely needs to be an Intune administrator. Gives him full access to devices and all the endpoint settings. Oh, what about me? I'm the one, as if there's a problem, I log a ticket directly with Microsoft. For you, Mike, my friend, it's Service Support Administrator. 
Just enough access to raise tickets. No actual admin rights. Oh, what about Gavin? Gavin wants a role. He basically wanders around the office and asks people if they've tried turning it off and on again. Ah, there's not actually a role for that, Mike. A shame. He was hoping for something with a badge or something like that. Tell Gavin he can be the vice president of Wriggling, the Ethernet cable. Now, you might be thinking, OK, Jonathan, I've picked the right role, but I still don't want to leave the door wide open. So here is an extra tip. This is where Microsoft Entra Privileged Identity Management, or PIM, comes in. With PIM, you can assign roles as illegible rather than permanent. So what does this mean? It means that users can request access to that role only when they need it. It means you can also require approval, MFA, or even justification to grant access to that role. And access to that role automatically expires after a set time. So instead of making someone a permanent SharePoint admin, for example, or worse still, a global admin, they get time-limited access only when it's required. It's exactly what a zero trust approach looks like in real life. I've got a video all about PIM on my YouTube channel. Now PIM is actually included with Microsoft Enter ID P2. Now that comes with Microsoft 365 E5, or it can be added to Business Premium as an extra. So if your business hands global admin out like Sweeties at Halloween, it's time to tighten things up. Pick the right role, use PIM, and keep your auditors happy. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I look forward to seeing you again soon.